Senator from Delaware, member of the Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Chris Coons. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Allison. How do you see this travel ban? Well, Allison, the thing that wasn't vetted properly was this travel ban. As your reporter just commented, uh, the Trump administration didn't consult uh, with leaders in their own administration, with the agency required to enforce it, and certainly not with their Republican allies in Congress. Uh, from the comments we've heard from many, I see it uh, as illegal, unconstitutional, and un-American. I don't think this ban will make us any safer. I frankly think it'll be a propaganda bonanza for ISIS. It has outraged a number of our close allies on whom we're relying uh, to be our partners in the war on terror. And it has sent the wrong message to our allies around the world about what we stand for as a country. Some of the first people caught up in the misguided uh, ban uh, just over the last 48 hours uh, were Iraqi translators yeah. who risked their lives for American troops in the war in Iraq. And I think the symbol that sends uh, is a strong one, and I look forward to joining others who will be protesting this ban and challenging it, uh, both with uh, statutory actions and legal actions. Let's talk about that, Senator, because what can you do? We understand that your colleague, Senator Dianne Feinstein of California, says that she's going to introduce legislation today that would seek to reverse it or stop this ban. But, as we all know, Democrats are not in power in Congress. What can you do? That's right, Allison. Uh, we don't control either the House or the Senate, so we have to have Republicans join us in order to be able to either stop the funding for the implementation of the ban uh, or to be able to pass legislation repealing the ban. Mostly what we can do is to express the voices that I've heard from. Thousands of Delawareans have reached out to my office expressing concern about this. Uh, frankly, uh, the congregation I grew up in um, helped uh, send to me an important signal about what it means to be a community of faith uh, by welcoming a refugee family from South Vietnam. When I was a young man, that very congregation uh, was set to welcome a Syrian refugee family this Thursday. Um, and I've heard by email, by Twitter, by phone call um, from folks all across Delaware that they want me to be standing up against this ban and they want to make sure that religious discrimination isn't enshrined uh, in how the Trump administration uh, carries these actions forward. Your colleague, Senator Chris Murphy, suggests that Democrats somehow try to slow down the approval process of the cabinet nominees. Are you, can you do that? Are you considering that? Um, we'll have to talk about that as a caucus. We have limited tools to do that. Um, we have, I think, made reasonable efforts uh, to slow down those cabinet nominations that were being rushed through to make sure that we get our questions answered, to make sure that they complete their background checks. Um, we're going to have to talk as a caucus about the consequences if we start filibustering nominees uh, and what happens next. Mm. We do expect a Supreme Court nominee uh, from President Trump this week. Uh, frankly, Allison, uh, this is going to be a very challenging first 100 days of the Trump administration, given how many different things they're moving around. So during Senator Sessions' confirmation hearing, you were obviously a part of that committee, um, he said, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that he would not support a Muslim ban. Did you hear him say that? That's my recollection. Um, but I also think it's telling that Rudy Giuliani, I believe on CNN, um, said that uh, now President Trump called him up and said, how do I get a Muslim ban done? And he coached him um, through a group of legal advisors on how to craft a Muslim ban uh, that might be legally defensible. Um, I point out to uh, um, Senator Sessions um, that the way this ban was crafted specifically encourages religious minorities uh, from these uh, countries from which uh, immigrants are banned uh, to make application. And President Trump went on the Christian Broadcasting Network uh, and spread some alternative facts about the numbers. We welcomed nearly as many Christian refugees as Muslim refugees last year. Uh, and this ban, although many say it is not a Muslim ban, is targeting only majority Muslim countries and has a specific carve out for religious minorities. Mm. Um, I don't think it's good policy when we start picking specific religions and specific nationalities for us to welcome or admit. That harkens back to the dark days of our immigration policy as a country uh, eight decades ago when we blocked Jewish refugees from coming here uh, during the Holocaust. Hey, Senator, very quickly, I just heard you use the term alternative facts that you say the Trump administration was using in terms of numbers on refugees. What's that a euphemism for? That's a euphemism for a lie. That's a euphemism for spreading um, false facts. Um, I probably should have said alternative facts. Um, <laughs> frankly, when the administration puts out things that are not factually true, I'm going to call them on it. And I think it's important 
um, that we put the record straight about what the numbers are here, um, as CNN has been reporting, not one American has been killed in a terrorist attack mm -hmm. carried out uh, by someone who was a refugee from one of these seven countries. So if the key focus of this executive order is to make us safer, uh, I don't think it meets that test. That is such an important point uh, for you to reiterate, and I'm glad that you did. One more thing, you know, the Trump administration says, hey, we didn't make up these seven countries that we're now suggesting for this travel ban, actually ordering for this travel ban. This came from 2015 from the Obama administration. These are the countries that they identified as being terror prone. What's your response to that? Allison, that is correct uh, that the state sponsors of terror lists, uh, roughly, and states uh, that are considered harbors of terrorism are these seven countries. But if the stated goal of the executive order, what it says on its face, is that it's designed to protect us from the threat of infiltration of those who might do us harm, the three countries from which people have come who committed the 9-11 attacks and other attacks are pointedly excluded from this list. And it's unclear why they were excluded from this list. And it suggests that that's not really what's going on with this, I believe, Muslim ban. Okay. Senator Chris Coons, thank you very much for your perspective on all of this. We'll talk soon. Chris. Thank you. All right, we are following breaking news from Canada.